Hi, I'm Kubis van Rensburg. Join me now for Capturing Glory. We're going to go into the Word of God. We can now all come boldly to the very throne of God, which is the real mercy seat. holy word handed down from generation to generation to find me here tonight in full power this word is going to break forth in supernatural anointing revelation knowledge and I will understand and bear good fruit in Jesus name okay Jesus says something in Matthew 7 Ask and you shall, would you just repeat that? Ask and you shall receive. Do you think Jesus is a liar or do you think maybe he is truth embodied? Okay, when he stood in front of Pilate's court and Pilate said, what is truth? Jesus didn't answer him because he didn't have to speak because he's all truth. Okay, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So Jesus is all truth. I am the way, the truth and the life. So if Jesus speaks, it'll come to pass. Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he not said and shall he not do it? Hath he not spoken and shall he not come to pass? Okay, so Jesus is ask and you shall receive now church look the holiest look you ever looked when you try to look holy how many of you ask and you say oh here I want to come okay so how many have been asking asking don't we don't want to you know break the atmosphere totally so just keep your hands down but how many have been asking for something and you know you don't know on which shelf they forgot it in the heavenly store true 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 so here come scriptures that I'll just, just throw a few of them in. First John chapter 3, verse 20 and 21 says the following. If our heart condemn us, God is greater and knows all things. If our heart condemn us not, then have we boldness, says the Amplified, the King James would say confidence. Then have we boldness towards God okay so ask and you shall receive so take the whole story of us back to first John and it says then have we boldness towards God and whatever we ask we receive Jesus says ask and you shall receive John comes later and he says if our heart condemn us not we have boldness and whatever Jesus just says, ask. John comes, he says, I walked with him. Ask whatever and you will receive. So uh, in, uh, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, the Hebrew writer comes and he says the following. He says, cast not away your boldness, which has a great recompense of reward. Okay? So keep... I'm just putting it in other words. Cast not away your boldness. So keep your boldness. Because it has a great recompense of reward. There was another man who wrote a scripture as well. His name was Kenneth Hagin. He wrote a Bible. It says, Mark 11.22 says. For anybody who ever knew Brother Kenneth Hagin that's now in the cloud. Okay. 
Mark 11, 22, Jesus cursed the fig tree and the next day the disciples came past and Peter noticed the fig tree that Jesus cursed. He said, Lord, behold, the fig tree that thou cursed is withered away. Jesus said, verse 22, have faith in God. For I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed from me, cast into the sea, shall have whatsoever he saith. And I say unto you, when you stand praying, whatsoever you believe, when you ask, you shall receive. Whatever you ask, believe, and you shall receive. Man, man, the Bible says on the word of two or three witnesses, every word will be established. We have four witnesses already. I mean, that's double receiving already. There we have four. Whatever you ask, believe, believe we have, believe we have, receive we have, receive we have. Okay, so... Uh, in this all, we need to have faith. Okay? That's more or less what he says. So let's go to our scripture reading for tonight, dear brothers, sisters, beloveds, and others. He says, Now, Peter and John just healed the man at the gate called Beautiful that was lying there for 38 years. Now, the religious people were not so happy with the healing as the disciples were. You know, they said, you know, you know this is not good. This is putting us out of business, huh? Verse 7. When they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Okay, there's now a miracle that happened. These guys talked to the man. He got up and he walked. And now the, the, the uh, Senate... <laughs> Senate. <laughs> okay. The Kerkrod, okay, the, you know, the Wolf Contour, you know, the Eight Furna Rod, okay, the Pharisees, scribes, Sadducees had them there, and they all in holy array, they say, by what power? So they must have seen a power in action. By what power? By what name have you done it? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said, You rulers of the people, elders of Israel, if, you, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but God raised up, by his name, this man is whole. Verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed... A notable miracle. <laughs> Come on, man. They saw the boldness. There was a notable miracle. Has been done by them. In, in, is manifest to all of them that dwell in Jerusalem. But they said, let us tell them not to spread this news. Let us tell them not to speak in this name anymore. Okay. Everybody. Don't throw your boldness away. Because it's having a great recompense of reward. If we have boldness, whatever we ask, we will receive. Amen. Ask and you shall receive. Whatever you ask, if you believe in your heart, you shall receive what you believe in your heart. They saw the boldness and said, Nala, eh, eh. A notable miracle has happened here. By what power did you do this stuff? If God is the owner, ruler and creator of the universe... And he promised Abram to be heir of the world. Romans chapter 4. And you are now God's child. And you are now an heir of God. And a joint heir of Jesus Christ. If you are now a son of God. If you are now born into the family of almighty God. You are his child. What will be too difficult for God to give you? Am I arrogant? If I go boldly and say hey. God, it's written. Am I arrogant if I say God has said whatever? 
God wants you to have whatever. God is prepared to give you whatever. God is prepared to do for you whatever. So why is it, church, that we don't get the stuff? I mean, we're supposed to get what we ask. We're supposed to get exceedingly, abundantly, far and above all that we dare, says the Amplified Bible. Think or pray for. Ephesians 3 verse 16 through 21. We're supposed to get exceedingly, abundantly, beyond and above all that we can dare ask or think. John chapter 4. Jesus is now at Jacob's well. The Samaritan woman said to him, now remember Jesus asked her for water. The Samaritan woman said, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan, and that a woman, for a drink, for those who saw it there, okay? For the Jews have nothing to do with the Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you had only known and recognized God's gift and who this is that he's saying to you give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water Amen. Amen. let's do it slowly dear brothers and sisters if you had only known and had recognized God's gift if you had only known and recognized God's gift with emphasis on gift, you would have asked him and he would have given you. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now just turn in John 7 verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried saying, If any man thirst." Now remember what we just read in John 4. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. If you recognized and knew who the gift of God was, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. If you believe, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, for Jesus was not yet crucified. If you had only known. Now remember, they took knowledge of the disciples that they'd been with Jesus when they saw their boldness. Okay, So if you know... If you only knew, let's put it in the present tense. I know it's not good English. If you, you should put can there to make it good English. If you only know, if you could only know, if you only knew, if you know God's gift, if you know God's gift, you will ask and he will give living water this he said that those that would believe will <laughs> and this he said of the holy spirit i hope somebody's getting this year tonight is that true Wow. So ask and you shall receive. If you have boldness, whatever you ask, you receive. If you keep your boldness, it has a great recompense of reward. Whatever you ask, believe, you shall receive. If you know God's gift, he will ask him and he will give you. This he said of the Holy Spirit was not yet, yet because he was not yet poured out. But it will be for those that believe, they are the ones that will receive.
By believing, it's by choice. I will receive, it's by choice. So by choice, I can get a reward. Receiving anything from me, it's your choice. Believing is a choice. God says, therefore, my rewards are by choice. I've displayed it through my whole word. You choose. It's not what you do, it's what you choose. Because Romans chapter 4 says, if the reward is by works, it's no more a reward. But if I take the reward by faith, then I'm rewarded. Okay? So, the rewards of the Almighty God is by choice, is displayed in His whole word. God says, this is for you, my child, this is my love letter. Everything I've made you heir of the whole estate. Remember the elder brother, Luke 15? When the younger brother was restored and reinstituted with the fatted calf and the fat party and the golden ring and the fat robe and the new shoes, you know, and the elder brother, you know, you know, elder brother's upset and the father come to me and say, you never gave me anything. He said, my son, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours. But you never asked. Okay, sorry for that revelation. Okay, so everything I have is yours. But you've never asked. Now, I'm very, very bold when I ask. I remember I was saved, oh yeah, about two months or so. And uh, we, the full gospel businessmen had a meeting there in Klagsdorp. And we had this American speaker. And he told us how he was caught up in glory. And he said, and there was this big door and it was bulging out. And it was nearly at breaking the hinges. And he saw his name. And Jesus was walking with him. And he said, why is my name on that door? Why is it bulging like that? He says, well, just look around. And he said, oh my goodness, there's more doors. And they all want to break at the hinges. And they all the doors are bulging to the outside. And his name's on it. And Jesus said, why don't you just touch the knobs of the doors. And as he touched it, he just broke open and stuff just fell out, man. Stuff, man. Anything that he could ever desire from the day he was born till then was just falling, falling. He said, wow. And everything had his name on it. And Jesus said, this is everything I want to give you, but you never asked me. Okay. So, uh, you don't have to worry about that, but, uh, yeah. So am I arrogant to be like this? Or do God expect me to be like this? Okay. So if you only knew, Saki, if you only knew the gift of God, all right? What is this gift? It's Jesus speaking to the woman. So John 3, 16, we know it. I'm not going to go there. For God so loved the world that he gave. So there's the gift. It's going to get good tonight. So he gave his only begotten son. Now here it comes. That whosoever, remember Mark 11, whosoever can ask whatsoever, that whosoever believe on him shall, what? Shall not perish but have everlasting life. Okay? So here's the gift of God and if we don't take this life story, we're never going to get the rest, I believe. So God gave. Here is God's gift. Jesus Christ. If I believe in him, I will have life. And never die. John chapter 11, verse 23, 4 and 5. I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he is dead, he shall live. But those that continue to live and believe in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So if I want to have life, and I want to have it more abundantly, i got to have a few things to have abundant life. By always struggling to get my debt pay is not abundant life. By always struggling to get my headache healed is not abundant life. By always struggling to get my mortgages on my side is not abundant life. To always, you know, hunger for a better car is not abundant life. To always thought how I could go on holiday but never have the opportunity to go is not abundant life. 
So let's go to John chapter 1. Verse 10. Now remember God gave. John 3. Now we're in John 1. This gift of God, verse, verse 10. He came into the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which belonged to him. To his own, his domain, his creation, his things. And they who were his own did not receive him. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave. Here comes another gift. The authority, the power, the privilege to become the children of God. That is to those who believe. In his name who owe their birth not to blood, but they are born of God. Verse 14, and the word became flesh. Dwelt amongst the table amongst us. We beheld his glory. Such glory as the only begotten son that receives from the father, full of grace. John testified about him. This is whom I what I said. He who comes after me is preferred before me. Okay. Verse 16, out of his fullness, we all receive Grace after another spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, favor upon favor, gift heaped upon gift. For while the law was given through Moses, grace, unearned, undeserved favor, spiritual blessing and truth came through Jesus Christ. No man has ever seen God. Only the only begotten who is in the bosom of the Father. But he has declared him. Revealed him, brought him out where he can be seen. He has interpreted him and he has made him known. Back to Acts chapter 4. The law was given by Moses, you know, but we know the letter kills. But we know that Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So, grace, we have faith there. Okay, we have Jesus here. And all this is a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. So, uh, there's a gift. It's even got my name on it. It doesn't say, I'm going to have it. I've got to receive it. By believing that gift is given to me. It's simple, but that's what I got in Eugene's office this afternoon. It shocked me. God said, go tell my people. The gifts are all over. But i got to believe. Oh, it's got my name. Wonderful. Oh, this is beautiful. Thank you. I leave it, I go home. Tomorrow I come, I say, oh! A gift with my name. Ha! Wonderful. Wonderful. Next week I visit. Ah! A gift. It's got my name. Ah! Wow. Wow. Next week I wait. A gift for me, my name. One day, hey, that gift has actually got my name. Thank you. I'll take it. And not before I open it and start using it, is it mine. It'll lie there forever and ever and ever till someday I realize my name is on it. That person actually gave it to me. It actually belongs to me. I can do with it whatever I want to. It's mine. This is what God said to me this afternoon. Receiving wherever you get it in the word is by choice. It's not just automatically yours. Whenever God says grace, mercy, truth, power, God says it's yours. Colin, this afternoon, God said to me, the receiving is by choice. It's not by automotion. 
Come on, I'll prove it to you. Acts 1 8 says, You shall receive power. You shall receive power. I'll try it once more after what we said. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. How many people got the Holy Spirit? Oh, we all have. So where's the power? You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit, and God says, receiving is by choice. So is believing by choice. Therefore, getting what you ask is your choice. Come on. Here stands preachers and he said, anyone in this house tonight, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, would you put up your hand? Two guys came in together. they wicked sinners. The one looked around. He says, I'm going to go. Are you going to go? He says, everybody, if you want to receive Jesus, your Savior, just come right out to the front. The one guy pushes the other one and says, I'm going to go out. He says, no, I'm not going. So the one gets saved, the one not, by choice. Okay? So he came unto his own. They recognized him not because they did not receive him. But as many as believed, gave you power to be received. Whatever you need, God has already said, you can have whatever you ask. But from your side, do you believe that you can receive? So we have Hebrews 11 verse 6. Listen to it again. He that goes to God. Now remember, if we have boldness towards God, whatsoever we ask. Hebrews 11, 6. He that goes to God must believe that he is, comma, and a rewarder. If I go to God and I said, Father, I must believe he is now the one that I address. Father, comma, and he is a rewarder. (laughs) Do not throw away your boldness which has a great recompense of reward. So God says, this is the topic. I went to the back. I said, I've got, for one time in a long time, I've got a title for my message. Because normally the titles come halfway. I said, I've got a title. Rewarded by choice. And now, verse 29. Are you in verse 29? If you are in verse 29, I am there too, then we can read together. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child Jesus. Amen. Verse 33, and with great power. Amen. Well, remember John 1, 6, 7, 16 and 17, remember? The law was given by Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And out of his fullness have we all received grace and for grace. Have we all received grace for grace? Have we all received grace for grace? Have we? So, somewhere, somehow, we got to make the choice that I'm going to now take my parcel. The gift is made out to me. According to God's foreknowledge, we have all received grace for grace. Oh, Kubas, I struggle with this grace message, man. Preachers. Preachers. Weekly, sometimes daily. Kubas, man, I've now been preaching three months on this grace, but you, I struggle with this thing, man. What do you do if such and such a person does such and such in your church? I say, nothing. <laughs> yeah, but Kubas, you know, you really, let, I say, I don't care what the others do. I, me, Kubas, zilt, zero, nothing. 
Do you know that man? Did you, you hear? I said, Grace! So God says, Hey, 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 here, Grace! Oh, no, 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 no. I just got to do something first. I just got to sort this thing out, sort that thing out. Because, ah, 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 ah. If you knew the gift, you would ask and he will give. So let's go to Romans 8. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, by choice. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. John 1, 12. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Hebrews 2, verse 15. Jesus came to deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Back to Romans 8. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But we have received the spirit of Christ. Now, take that word received and write in your Bible by choice, by choice, by choice, by choice. By choice, you don't have to be in bondage. By choice, you don't have to die. By choice, you can have the Holy Spirit. By choice, you can know the gift of God. By choice, you can ask. By choice, you can receive. By choice, whatever. Now remember, the law was given by Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. But you've got to receive grace. The grace of God that brings us salvation Titus 2, 11, is it, has appeared unto all men. But you've got to decide. By choice. How far will you take the gift of God's grace? Come on, 2 Corinthians 3. The letter kills. The Spirit gives life. Jesus says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. To whom shall we go with you are the words of life. So the letter kills. So the thief comes to kill. So what is the thief? The law. Not Satan. Satan is not mentioned in John 10. The law will rob you. So if I go back to the law stuff, which was given by Moses, I will never get grace upon grace. And if I know the gift of God, I will step out of the law thing and I will go by faith and I will go get the fullness of the grace gift of God, which is the life of Jesus Christ himself, which will quicken my mortal body, which will bring me immortality, eternal life, everlasting life. And I will know if I want to stay here forever, I need a few things. So whatever way I it, I'm going to ask and I'm going to get it. Romans 5. God commends his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified. Remember Hebrews 10 verse 14. He has forever perfected those whom he justified. Okay. By his blood, remember Romans 3.25, he put Jesus in his blood as the mercy seat. Okay. We shall be saved from wrath to, by him. For if when we were enemies... We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, listen to this stuff. As by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for that all have sinned now listen this is going to shock you man for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law nevertheless listen to this man this is a rocker death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned. 
after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Just listen to the words that we've mentioned tonight. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace, remember gift, of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive, they which receive, they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ with emphasis on receive grace, receive the gift, receive righteousness. Did he make us righteous? How many really believe they're righteous? Then the fruit of righteousness is the tree of life. The book of Proverbs. The fruit of righteousness is the tree of life. The fruit of righteousness is the tree of life. So God says, if they eat of the tree of life, they shall never die. Genesis 3.24 So to those that receive the abundance of grace, which means grace upon grace. So the law came by Moses, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ out of his fullness. Have we all received? Yes. Now, I want to say tonight, church, it's time to wake up and realize the receiving is by option. It's by choice. You must receive. The gift is there. How much of this gift have you received? Oh, course, what must I do now? Nothing. What do you want to do? But how am I going to make right? Nothing. He made it right. He gave you a gift of righteousness, gift of grace, and a gift of himself. Do you want it? Take it. Paul says, I'm not aware that I ever did anything wrong. He says, Paul, he says, hey, psst, I'm the chief of sinners. He said, when it comes to sin, I'm the worst. He said, okay, when it comes to you, I've never done anything right because I did not receive the grace in vain. I'm free. He said, and there's nobody here that can judge me because I'm spiritual. I have the mind of Christ, you can't judge me. But you're natural, so just be judged. He says, I received the grace. I'm free, man. He said, I didn't even consult with the Pope. <laughs> For if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more, they which receive. Okay, man. Therefore, as by the offense, verse 18... Of judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Ooh, even so by the righteousness of one. The free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life through Christ Jesus. <laughs> Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to verse 2. Eugene Leisterboot. By whom also, now you've got to take this word out of the King James. I want to drop it in. We have access by faith into this grace. 
Hey, hey. Johan, you have access. Hannes, you have access. Tony, you have access. But God is saying, here's all my grace, all my power, all my gifts. You have access. So Paul says, I will not receive it in vain. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to grab it. And if this is what it says, I take it. So that's why it says in 1 Corinthians 15, it's by the grace of God that I am what I am. And I will not be judged by no natural human person. I will not be judged by any one of you. He said, I even opposed Peter because he wanted to go back to the law. Because I will not be judged. He said, some brethren crept in to try and spy out our liberty. He said, but we will not be judged by you. Because... We have received the grace, not in vain. Amen. See, but you know what? I'm the most wicked sinner there is. If I go to the law. But I'm dead to the law to live unto Christ. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as the result of obeying the law? Or was it by hearing the message and then believing it? Are you so foolish and senseless and stupid and silly? You begun in the spirit. Why do you want to now reach perfection by the law? Verse 5. And he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit. Remember John 4 and 7. And works powerfully in one miraculous among you. Does he do so because you do what the Lord demands or because you believe? Verse 11, but no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident that the just shall live by faith. The law, verse 12, is not of faith. Verse 13, but Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now verse 14 is the one. So that the blessing of Abram now, underline the words that I emphasize. Might. Might. Come. On the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. It's a choice. Did you see it there? Hey. Hey. You might. Just perhaps receive it tonight. You might. Receiving is a choice. So you are rewarded by choice. If it's not by choice, why aren't the world saved yet? If it's not by choice, why aren't everybody healed? If it's not by choice, why aren't everybody driving the best cars? If it's not by choice, why aren't everybody having their own homes? If it's not by choice. Yeah, but Kubis, you know, you know, some people just haven't got it by choice. Kubis, why do you think we struggle? I said, you just said it. Kubis, what do you think we're doing wrong? I said, what you're saying now. Ask them if they phone me. This is what I say to them. Chris, what do you think we're not doing? I said, what you're doing now. You are hung by your tongue. Hey! I remember how I used to preach. I used to say to the people, take your Bible, put it in front of your face, stick out your tongue to where you can see it. And then say, if it wasn't for you. If it wasn't for you, what would you have had already? And funny, I remember when we took the faith message years ago, people said, oh, you know, this is Christian science. This thing is mind over matter. People think if they keep on saying they're going to have it. I said, it's funny, they say it and they have it. Hmm? Oh, this Hagen stuff, brother. I remember when we just got in the ministry. Oh, you know, there's this Hagen man in preaching. Hagen. I said, Hagen. <laughs> they gave me the book. I said, oh, Hagen. <laughs> Father, we thank you tonight. 
Oh, Lord. Well, I pray that the word of Christ will now dwell richly in our hearts. Your protection over the seed that fell tonight. That not one drop of seed will be along the wayside, stony ground or between thorns. But all the seed will be on fruitful ground. And that we will have at least hundredfold. Dear eternal most high God, our Father. Thank you that the promise is there. Whatever you ask, you will receive. If you believe and if you know the gift. Right. So here is a gift for you. Number one. His name is Jesus Christ. Number two, grace. Number three, faith. Number four, righteousness. Number five, life. So Deuteronomy 30, God comes to Moses. He says, tell the people to choose life. It's there in your Bible. Choose life. Here comes Joshua. He says, choose you this day whom you will serve. But for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Here comes Elijah. Choose you this day whom you will serve. If God is God, serve him. If Baal is God, serve him. Make a choice. Choose. I'm not going to sit with bankruptcy. I'm not going to sit with lack. I'm not going to sit with shortage. I'm not going to sit with sickness, pain, cancer, disease, and virus. I'm not going to sit with it anymore. I am a child of God by choice. I receive because I believe. Now I have the power to be a child of God. I will be led by the Spirit. I will not be in bondage. I will not fear because God has not given me a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. I have life and I have it more abundantly and I'm going to go for God's life. Wow. Spirit of God. Okay, everybody out loud. Are we so, we're not going to give an invitation now. It's now open. We all have access to this grace. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. And Galatians chapter, Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. We now have access. Okay, so grace is opening up our life to you tonight and say, come and receive. Okay, everybody out loud say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I believe tonight the gift of God, which is in the person of the Lord Jesus is bringing me eternal, everlasting, abundant, immortal life. I will not settle for destruction, death, or perishing. Jesus came that I might prosper, so I will not settle for lack, shortage, or bankruptcy. I will go for God's plenty by choice. Joshua 1 8, Psalm 1, Jeremiah 17. I am a tree that's planted by the waters. I am prosperous and successful in all my ways. Nothing can hinder me, nothing can oppose me, nothing can resist me. I have angels working for me. I have God's hand on my life. I have got righteousness going ahead of me. I have glory being my rear God. I have the face of God shining upon me. By His stripes, I'm a healed person. My body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. By choice, I now acknowledge the gift of God. Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. So by choice, I now drink at the fountain of living water. By choice, out of my belly flows rivers of living water. By choice, I am now perfected, 
sanctified, justified, and righteous. I can't work for it, but I believe it. So by choice, I now receive life, life more abundantly. I receive the grace, not in vain. So everything that grace can give me, everything by faith I can have, I declare all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Therefore I believe, therefore I receive. Whoever read the book, the name is The the Story of Two Kings, the life story of Elvis Presley, written by his youngest brother, Ricky. Did you know that he had three stepbrothers? Uh, His father, who had Graceland towards his house, was a very rich guy, and then, you know, uh, but his mother died when he was, what's it, 15 years old or something. Then his father married this other woman when he was 19 years old. At this age of 19, he just made GI blues and stuff like that, films, and he was the most popular guy in the world, and he made money like not even the, the President of the United States made. Okay, so he was rich. He gave more money to welfare in a term than the whole welfare society of America gave for in one year. Okay, so uh, and uh, uh, these little three brothers were sitting in the orphanage, and here stopped this big Cadillac. All right, and here comes their mother. They couldn't stay by their mother. They didn't have the mother didn't, and she said. Come, meet your new father. So they met Mr. Presley. And, uh, and when they got in the car, the eldest of the three was ten. The youngest was five, which was Ricky. And the elder said, Hey, this is Elvis's car. They said, Who's Elvis? Now the older one was already where he could understand, you know. Well, you know. And... Uh, They said, who's Mr. Presley? He said, he's the most famous guy in the world. He's the richest guy in the world. His name is on everybody's lips. So the car drove into Graceland through all those oak trees. You know, man, this is where Grace opened for me. Like, zap! And uh, so they came home. It was now nighttime. And they all went upstairs. There's two staircases coming down in Graceland. There's a big lounge at the bottom. The three boys went to their new rooms. And they were so excited. And excitement tired them out. So they fell asleep. After 12, Elvis came home. And his father and his stepmother was now there. He said, so where's my new brothers? He said, they're all asleep. He said, can I just go see them quickly? So he walked into the room and looked at them. They're all sleeping. So he found a toy shop said, well, I tell you, this is Elvis. Oh, Elvis. Uh, I want one of everything in your, no, I want three of everything in your shop. Oh, but the shops are closed. No, no. I'll buy your shop. (laughs) What? He said, I'll pay you double. Bring everything you have in your shop, three of everything. But I want it here before tomorrow morning, six o'clock. Okay, man. They packed that whole lounge. You should read the book. They packed that whole lounge full of stuff. And Elvis had a white gown and he sat amongst those gifts. There was no place for anything else. And he waited. It was like, he didn't sleep at night, the guy. (laughs) He didn't. So uh, he slept at daytime because nighttime was up. So the morning, here comes the three brothers. And here's Elvis, listen, true story, with a white gown... You don't have to take this, but it blessed me. It changed my whole idea towards life. In the midst of all the gifts. And the guys came down and they stopped. Here's Elvis, the most famous guy in the world. And they're in the same house. Because their mother married his father. So Elvis came down. Oh, they came down and Elvis said, come here, come here. I believe my father married your mother. If it's true. You are now my brothers. If you are now my brothers, everything I have is yours. I don't want you to ever have lack in your life. So I bought you each a present. But remember, Graceland 
is now your house. It's your home. Whatever is on this property belongs to you. God says, Romans 8, take it. I preached that Sunday. I said, man, grace land, open grace for me. If God is now my father and Jesus is now my elder brother and I'm adopted into the family of God, whatever he has is now mine. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Come, there's a man out of a wheelchair walking. Come on, they brought him in a wheelchair. There he is not walking. Somebody shut. This man paralyzed is from the Congo. Paralyzed, he's up walking. Come on, preacher from the Congo, he's up walking. More than more than a song you ever convey. I need you more. Perfect. Than all of these things. Perfect. If I Perfect. Love you more. Perfect. Strength. 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 Come. Let's walk, brother. Come on, somebody help the man. Yeah.